schoolyards and backyards and parks are re chucking their traditional play equipment and replacing them with natural playscapes. Natural playscapes mimic the richness and variety and interest of the natural world. We all know what's best for our kids, and we know that it's for them to get out and play. But in today's age where we've got the lure of screen time, we need something that's going to be interesting for them. Research has found that kids will play more and longer in natural playscapes than traditional playgrounds. Now I'm going to walk around and show you how easy it is to think like a kid and create some natural playscape elements in your backyard. Instead of going out and spending two or three thousand dollars on a piece of play equipment that might not interest your kids for more than ten minutes, why don't you go out and find some free things in nature? And over here, this is my treasure trove of free natural play stuff, sticks and logs. Kids can move them around, create forts, create shelters, um, even nature art. Here got some stones. You can go out and get a ton of limestone for a hundred dollars and create a, like a retaining wall as if you're creating a landscaped bed. Fill it full of sand or rocks or dirt and the kids will play for hours. Kids kind of like a place where they're hidden away and they can create their own world. So you might want to look around your property for a hidden unused place that can become the kids Wonderland. So over here we've got a woodshed. Maybe you've got a garage or a shed. That space behind there you can dump a pile of dirt, um, put some sticks, and the kids have their Wonderland. Picture perfect. Realize that this is the ideal place and where kids want to play. Um, if you don't want your yard looking this wild, to a kid, if you put three tall shrubs together, they can go in there and hide and create their own fort and still looks good for you. One of the most critical elements in a natural playscape is a rich variety of plantings. So you might want to grow some vegetables with your kids or create habitat for birds and butterflies. Butterflies need both host plants like butterfly milkweed or nectar plants like purple coneflower. And birds love fresh berry sources like arrowwood viburnum or even crab apples. All it takes to create a natural playscape is to really think like a kid. I'm Jamie Zambito and this is the Mary Evans Outdoor Natural Playscape and I'm glad to uh, take a minute and show it to you. Um, when we were really thinking about this outdoor space and some of the elements we had to have, we really wanted to have uh, sand, water, dirt, wood, sticks and uh, we have those and all of those were free. Um, any pushback that we've had that has been maybe safety oriented um, surrounding like jumping from our stumps or using those big sticks, we really have not had any injuries. We have teachers engaged. Uh, people are really playing and growing and learning um, every day. So we've uh, utilized a lot of community support and parent support. The water in the sandbox, uh, one of our capable parents set up that pipe system and hose system for us, and that was free. And all it took was a garden hose, you know, a couple of links of garden hose. And uh, that's been really powerful and a lot of fun. This hill is directly from a picture out of Rusty Keeler's book. And when the new site was being uh, developed, 
they followed the diagram and put that in for us. And what does it do for their development to be? They're running up a real hill. They're, and, and they run and climb and they'll run up and down. They are really, really running. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and it's different <clears throat> than just running on, on flat asphalt. It's, it's uh, all that running on this uneven ground is good mm -hmm. for their balance. Mm -hmm. Kids aren't spending enough time outdoors. It's is kind of impacting their vision. Our kids are out in this big space. They have to look at things far away. They look at things up close. All aspects of their development is enhanced and enriched. Berry bushes that were planted and they are edible and they taste like blueberries. So all of these service berries were covered with service berries. All these service berry bushes were covered with service berries. And in the spring, we had kids eating off the berries. They looked like scavenging birds. Um, and it and we checked to make sure they were edible and we have a doctor who's a parent and we looked it up and everything was good and it was really so much fun. We're making, I'm going to make some salsa for the children. They just went out to the garden and they picked some tomatoes. We have different kinds of tomatoes. A green pepper. Um, this was a green onion and these are chives and I'm just going to do that and I have some chips and a little bit of hot sauce because they like salsa anyway. And we're going to let them taste it from the garden. Um, sometimes people wonder if parents and staff are supportive of so much dirt and active engagement, uh, particularly around the sand and the water. So I will say we've done a lot of work around parent education on sending clothes to change into. If your vision is that kids are going to be out getting wet and sandy and dirty and you have the clothes to change into, it's, it turns into a non-issue. So here we are, you know, three years later, um, and we've been out in this playscape. And when we initially started, we could have had some hesitation and fear on the part of the staff. But after experiencing, observing kids, continually engaged. The redirection out here is almost non-existent. Every child that comes outdoors is successful. really aren't playing in the woods anymore. They're much more attracted to uh, electronic devices, whether television or their handheld devices. They were playing games inside rather than playing out of doors. And that was really stunning their development in many ways. And so we wanted to make kids healthier, uh, get them out to appreciate nature, um, a variety of things, you know, help fight the obesity issues as well for children. So there's a lot of reasons we really need kids outside playing again. Natural play areas are areas that we at the Metro Parks have set aside where we really encourage kids to get out and play in the woods and the fields and the meadows. Uh, we want them to get out there and really experience uh, nature as many of their parents or grandparents are, where they can go out, they can catch bugs, uh, climb trees, play, you know, just play, go down in the creek, look for crayfish. Lots of fun things that uh, historically we might have discouraged. You know, the, the, with, in Metro Parks we really had an evolution, so for a long time we uh, wanted people to stay on trails and uh, avoid. Uh, we, we, were all, we were very worried about the impact of people on nature, but one of the realizations we were seeing, of course, is how important nature is for people, and we really need to get out and experience it. And so we, we've uh, got away from that in a couple different ways. First off, we've uh, opened up most of the parks to off-trail activities, so you really are permitted to go and explore the parks in many different ways that you can enjoy. And then in these natural play areas, we've really opened up and, and even changed the rules even more where we're encouraging kids to go out and you know, catch critters and, as I said earlier, climb trees, play, play in the woods. We want kids down playing in the creek. We want them to you know, really have fun in the woods. Uh, you know, I think they could, if they're really going to learn to w love the woods, to protect the woods, if they're really going to be conservationists in the long run, they've got to have a personal connection to it. And they're more likely to have a personal connection if they've done fun things that they enjoy doing. Uh, and, and, and fortunately, those fun things also help them develop, grow, you know, stay healthy. Uh, so there's benefits for them that they may not know about, but 
you know, first thing I think, the kids will come back if they're really out there having fun. Uh, the response has been very favorable for families and children. One of the interesting issues is there's an awful lot of parents who grew up not playing in the woods themselves. And we actually have found ourselves needing to give programs to teach parents how to let their kids play in the woods. Um, so, and we had very good, we did one just past month and I think we had 125 people, parents and kids show up to learn how to play in the woods. So it's, a, it's an interesting issue. As, regarding other parks, I think this movement uh, is widespread across the country. In fact, the National Recreation Park Association is doing uh, additional work to uh, encourage all, you know, natural play areas throughout the, throughout the country. Dear Mom and Dad, guess what? We cooked our dinner outside and Then we slept underneath the starry sky I learned how to lead a hike and How to fish and swim and How to row the boat to the edge of the lake and back again And I did it So one of the things about camping experiences for kids that's different from taking your class out to a park for an hour or going on a hike and going back home is that you're really here for an extended period of time. The kids, there's the novelty and then they get over that and then there's a little bit of anxiety. There's, this isn't like home and it's uncomfortable and then there's where you just finally make peace with it and develop a relationship with the place and and come to terms with the fact that you're going to be here and how will that change you and, and your behavior and um, I think that's what's really special about staying at camp for more than just a few hours or a night. I don't believe what I'm about to say I don't even miss my computer games yeah I'm having the time up to the dining hall so when kids come here this is this is the uh, exercise they'll be getting and they won't even realize it they won't even realize it so by the time we get to the top of this hill we'll be huffing well Alice won't because she's a triathlete but I, I might but you can't get this you can't get this at a computer camp you can't get this even at a soccer camp this is only nature camp kind of material. They have learned to use the many experiences that have enabled them to assimilate better their knowledge. They've also grown in respect for and understanding of campmates of other races and religions. They have seen vista fields and rivers, thus widening their horizons. These experiences should stand them in good stead now and later in life, experience we think every child in America should enjoy. What is more hopeful than witnessing growth? If you've witnessed a child's face when they have achieved a skill, task, or project, no test or score will give you better proof of success. Every child should experience success. Every child should have a camp experience. Extending Education Through Camping, 1948. Love, why not? Why not love? Why not love? So that's a visit to uh, our camp that we went to when we were little. Um, it's one camp of many across our state and across the country. I'd say it's a good old-fashioned nature camp, but it's not really old-fashioned at all. It's exactly what kids need. I mean, research is showing more and more that children need nature for their healthy development. 
the American Academy of Pediatrics says that children need to get outside in nature for an hour a day. And we feel that camps like this, they are the most valuable resource for our children's health. And we hope, we hope, and we're working to preserve these camps. We don't want to see any more camps closing, not nature camps like this. They're just too valuable. Hope you enjoyed the visit.